Welcome. Kicking off the week of back to school tips and tricks with a very full studio, and we'll share why with you later. But there's a lot of activity, a lot of buzzing around going on here. <laughs> and back to school can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. If you're a if you're a kid having a great summer, then it's kind of like, oh no, this many days left. If you're the mom and you're trying to entertain your kids all summer, you're like, oh my gosh, there's only <laughs> nine days left if you're in St. John's County. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah. so it just really depends on where you are in life as to how exciting or, or nerve-wracking this time of year can be. Yeah, and for me, my kids, they're different because some of them are cool with going back to school and others are already like, what is happening? And I found this study and it's spot on, at least for my family. Kids start to act out and it's because of the stress. And it's not necessarily of like homework or things like that. It's just they don't know how to calm down and prepare themselves for all these changes. And with one of mine, I'm not gonna say who it is, but it's the oldest one. I can tell <laughs> he's starting to be a little more high strung and things are getting underneath his skin a little bit faster. And it's like what you said, we're about a week away for going back into school. And with this research that they did, they basically said you have to figure out a way for that kid to calm him down. Because as a parent, you always say, just calm down, relax. But we're not giving them the tools to do that. And a lot of it has to do with stimuli. So make sure they're in a, a quiet setting, maybe turn down a TV. Sometimes it could be just um, being hypersensitive to light or things like that. How quiet can you get a house full of four boys? Exactly. Not that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> not I, that. I, I, That's I'm why curious. I'm always so edgy. <laughs> Maybe at midnight? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. On a good day. On this a good might day. be a, some sort of torture, but maybe put them on a treadmill and just like run it out, son. <laughs> well, run you know what? Out. I do think activity helps out, though, with kids. You know, sure. at least for some of them that are more active, they're kind of like little puppies. <laughs> you know, you got to take them <laughs> for that walk and kind of burn some of that off. But it is interesting, though. Around this time, you're going to start to see kids act out because they know their mm -hmm. whole structure or their lack of structure right now is going to change in the matter of a week. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's an adjustment. You're suggesting that even if they don't know that that's what it is, even if they're not that kid that is dreading school, it could just be that they know things are, that their world is about to get rocked. Got to get up uh -huh. and deal with a teacher, uh -huh. no longer hanging out and eating Fruit Loops with the family, <laughs> right. that mm -hmm. thing. Well, this is something a little bit along those lines. On my last trip to Beach Boulevard Flea Market, I had a foodie experience that let me left me completely full and satiated. <laughs> so this time I rolled out there looking for some back to school options that would leave my wallet full or at least not as drained as it would be if I went to some other retail stores. Classy closeouts. You've got some of everything in, out here at the Beach Boulevard Flea Market. This Absolutely. is kind of like a one-stop CVS if people want to roll through here. Absolutely. And so what kind of stuff can people find? Um, well, the most popular shelf is the $2 shelf. Yeah, that's where you get your shampoos, conditioners, all your household cleaners, um, just, you know, random things like that. Um, a big seller is diapers and diaper wipes. Um, everybody comes for that. And you got to come early because they go quick. Well, this time of year, back to school is a big thing, and so I see folders, notebooks, little drink cups Absolutely. for the kids. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people, they were coming in for that, too. We've got the wet ones wipes that the teachers asking for, the Clorox wipes that they're asking for. We've got the hand sanitizers. We've got backpacks, um, notebooks. I got a couple of kids in the neighborhood. I'm going to be the coolest man on the block. Let's enjoy the empire. So you say come to classy closeouts because stay out of Walmart. Come out here, exactly. meet some people, get some good quality food. Save money. You like to save money part. <laughs> You've got some of the popular football jerseys. That's soccer for, you know, you Americans. That's great for kids when they want to go back to school. Yes, and the quality is good is 100% cotton. And the jewelry, I know some of the girls, when they go back to school, they want to look all pretty and chic and stuff like that. You've got some very interesting looks. I have a lot of earrings, handmade, necklace, and a silver, Peruvian silver also. What makes Peruvian designs so great? Um, the quality, the imagination, how do you say? We got different models, types. Tease toys, this is a perfect place to get in on the back to school action. And you've got this nice little desk and hutch you've redesigned and reimagined for a young lady. Yes, I have. 
I actually had, my friend had given me the desk to do something with differently, and I changed out the colors to fit what I thought would be a nice color for a girl's room and give it some power and some vibrancy. Um, I took down some pinks. I didn't like pinks so much because girls like power colors nowadays, and so I wanted to get some teal in there and some beachiness and make it just totally personal. Girl power. So, yes. And we see you supporting the locals with one of our local author's books up here yes. on display. Yes, we do. We have a beautiful book here, Barful Fulong from Oolong Pan Shu and the, the Gray Bubble Goo. It's a very neat project by Nick Lauren. My friend Mary Lee Buckley is working with them to promote this project. I think they're actually doing a movie right now on it. They I haven't wanted called to... me for casting yet. Not yet, but hey, that book <laughs> might be coming, and if it is, I'll, I'll wardrobe you for it. Nice. <laughs> also, uh, back to school, we've got some backpacks, we've got hats, it's that time of year, getting yes. the kids ready. Well, I've got a vintage Star Wars backpack. Uh, we've got here the Toy Story action oh, figures. A hard it's a hard shell. shell, you know? <laughs> of course, for the teenagers who maybe don't want to have a superhero on their backpack, we've got the High Sierra, we've got the um, Skull Candy, and then over here we have Skylanders back here. So, so what's so great about being out here, uh, Tease Toys being at Beach Boulevard Flea Market? Well, it's a very unique, eclectic place with a lot of diversity and a lot of unique shops. And you can find things here that you can't find in a retail store. I have great customers. I mean, really great customers. Like one of my customers just brought me breakfast, um, which I thought was really great. But you can get me in. Hey, I didn't know you was coming. <laughs> so, you know, you, you build great relationships. So the thing about the stores at Beach Boulevard Flea Market is you don't have to wait for sales. So all the low prices that you see there day to day are, are pretty much like that all the time. So it gives you a lot of diverse options for shopping and the food, of course. We can go <laughs> yeah, get into that all day. That. Yeah, so if you want to know more about the Beach Boulevard Flea Markets, go to our website, RiverCityLiveTV.com, and click on the As Seen on RCL link pinned at the top. Gotta throw the food in. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I never yeah. would have thought about like getting your Clorox wipes and getting all, I would have not thought about that, but of course, that's oh, yeah. a great option. Great option. All right, so a study has come out that says maybe talking baby talk to your kids isn't as bad as originally thought. There were a lot of, a lot of parents who felt like they should talk as an adult from day one to their kid <laughs> because that way they would learn faster, they would just be ready to communicate better. But no, that wasn't the right <laughs> thing to do. Listen, do. no, it was not. Marky Mark, you like hosting? I prefer when you guys talk to me that way. I don't know. It's just calming, it's soothing. I get it. So uh, the uh, Rutgers University study says that these kinds of conversations with your little ones are more understood and embraced and they're more comfortable for your baby right so what about talking to other adults are you like shafto believes that it's easier <laughs> i've I, never really talked to my kids that way just my pet <laughs> oh really like, oh. i talk to my kids like they're uh, grown-ups and then turn around to my dog and say easy me silly <laughs> 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 and that's why that's why your pets love you more. So that's that's what it is. Yeah, you have so a better better rapport with them. So. Do you talk to your kids that way? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's true though, because you could break down things. If I'm like, say dada, dada, like I don't say say dad, you yeah. know, because then my kid would be like. <laughs> but when you say it like da da da, then they do it. Like they mimic what you're saying. And then as soon as they become like two or three, then I talk to them like an adult. I'm like, you need to go pick that stuff up. <laughs> And then they're like, what? <laughs> but the younger ones, they actually get kind of a, an advantage because they've got older siblings that kind of talk to them and stuff like that, right? But what happens when you're a young child, everybody's doing the talking for you. Uh -huh. So when you're, the, when you're the oldest, you have to learn how to talk because you got to fend for yourself. It's just you. <laughs> By the time you're a little kid, everybody is picking up on what the baby needs. So they're slower talkers. And I see that firsthand. And I'm one of eight kids, and I saw that with my house. My brother, who's 23, still doesn't really talk. He, makes fun of He's, he talks really slow and methodical. And you know, like, I talk fast. And we will make fun of him, and he can't even get a word in. We're, we'll just make fun of him like crazy. He's like, oh, look. I'll go back. I mean, it's pretty funny. It's my, my brother, Jacob. So. And he's a smart kid. He's just really slow. <laughs> really slow. In speech. We got, got, we got, we got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I do it like Jacob, my next door here? Oh, yeah, let me see if you can so, do it. So, Disney has <laughs> something new. No, I can't do it. it. It drives me crazy. I have a headache just talking like that. So anyway, I love technology, and anytime there's a story about technology, I'm all over it. Well, Disney Parks, they have this new technology where they actually scan your feet when you walk into the park. And the reason why they're scanning the feet, because they want to know where you're walking to and what your patterns are. So they're going to take a picture of like your shoe, uh, the pattern, 
they could even detect if you had like a piece of gum on it to separate you from everybody else. Hmm. And again, it's a patent, so they're the first to come out with this technology. Now, they're not sure if they're going to use it or not, but they want to help out the customer uh, guest experience throughout the park and figure out where they're going, where they've been, and maybe like schedule like Donald Duck to say hello to you. But here's my hunch. This is for security. Oh, totally. Oh, that's, that's yes. what I'm thinking too. Totally. They're trying to cover it up, and the reason why, you don't see that your foot's being scanned. Right. So if you were doing any other type of biometrics, you would see that, or if you're a little kid, you're like, why are they doing this? Or you go to the airport and they wave you down. But with this, it's such a slick way to figure out what's happening, where are these people going, and what are the trends. And again, they didn't say this, and it's not what the article's saying. That's just what I'm you're saying. You're just blowing the lid off. A little conspiracy yes, yeah. theory. But it's also a good it's way a to keep yeah. track of your kids if something like, you know, you lose yeah. track that's of That's another way too, yeah. yeah. So when, <laughs> when, my, when my son was in preschool, there was a parade for Halloween and four kids in the class are Spider-Man and nobody knew who they were. <laughs> so we all started looking at their shoes because that oh, was right. the only way oh, you could tell nice. by their yeah. shoes. So I think that there's definitely something to that. People are very unique in their shoes. Well, and Stuart rocks Tevas all the time, like whenever he's doing a lot of walking. <laughs> you, you know, those what? big, those big, uh, those big no. sandals. Yeah, so like he'd be easy to detect. So he's a big oh, fan yeah. of Tevas, yeah. <laughs> Actually, so. come on, tell the truth. He wears Crocs like Metalli. Oh. It depends. It depends on his day. If he's yeah. walking in a park, you're right. Crocs might be more apropos for that yes. situation. When they're out Pokemon going, he's got his Crocs yeah. on. So if he gets separated from but the group. Basically, a thick, robust <laughs> sandal is what he likes. And then he's also got active socks, too, that he wears. You know, very stylish man with yeah, his cargo pants. Very, very <laughs> <laughs> we want to show you something fantastic. You know, we, we try to bring you stories from the no excuse zone on a regular basis. These are stories about folks who are faced with challenges and they choose to look on the bright side or, or get things done regardless. So there is a woman in New York who is sadly undergoing chemo, but she has decided that with the help of some friends, that every chemo session is a photo session. So they've been setting up different scenarios, different movies, and um, there's oh, a cute. superhero. Was the first one Golden thing. Girls? Was that what that was, was the first what one? What was the first one? I, I don't even remember. So uh, let's see. Oh, that's Forrest there. Gump. Yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, so okay. cool. Yeah, I get right. that. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. And what do we have there? Which one is that? Oh. That's, is that? Um, oh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. OK. Cal Drago. Oh, wow. Yeah, I saw some of them. There's one where she's Rosie the Riveter. What is that one? That's like Willy Wonka or something? Yeah. Or what, oh, oh look at you. Golden Ticket. Oh, Golden Ticket. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And that's really cool considering like a lot of the people that you talk to who go through chemo and those kind of situations, it's kind of a downer. Oh, that, it is, yeah. You know, and for the and the nurses have all bought in. So, yeah, that's awesome. Love yeah. it. Love it so much. All right. Don't go anywhere. We have a big uh, learnable, teachable moment for you when we come back.